In this lecture, we will see three position synthesis of slider crank mechanism by inversion method. So, we can see for this method, the given data is S12, S13. As we know in slider crank mechanism, when this input crank rotates, the slider will reciprocate. So, for us, input link AB. We have given S12, S13, E, theta 1 to theta 1, 3. Theta 1, 2 is nothing but angle between the first and second position of input link. Theta 1, 3 is angle between first and third position of input link. E is eccentricity between the slider line of stroke and fixed link. So, this one is eccentricity E, which is known to you. Also, S12, S13 means distance between first and second position of slider. First and third position of slider is also given to you. So, accordingly, we need to synthesize a slider crank mechanism. Now, we will see a step by step procedure to draw this mechanism. So, in first step, we have to take two lines parallel to each other at a distance of E, e which is given, that is eccentricity. So, I just mark this first line here. Now, with reference to this line at distance E is equal to 20 mm. That is 20 centimeter or uh, 2 centimeter. I have to mark one more line. So I will draw another line at distance 2 centimeter. So these two lines are representing line of slider and line of fixed link. After this, we need to take point A for a fixed link center and point let us say C on a this slider path. Both point for first position so we call it as A1 and C1. So I will take point A1 arbitrary on this line of the fixed link. Let us I consider point A here as it is first position I call it as A1. Now similarly, I need to select point C, C on anywhere on this path of slider. Let us say consider here. So this is first position of slider, called it as C1. So I consider this point A1 and C1 on these both lines. After this, I need to mark C2 and C3 on this second line such that C1, C2 is nothing but S12 and C1, C3 is nothing but S13. So mark point C2 and C3 by considering distance S12 and S13. As S12 is 40 mm, I will mark first point C2 at 40 mm. So this is position of C2 and C3 is at S13 that is 96. So exactly here it is. These are C2 and this is C3. Now, once you get C2 and C3, let's call them as now I have to join this A1 and C2 and A1 and C3. So let's join them A1 C2 and A1 C3. So I join A1 C2, now it is A1 C3. As distance or angle theta 1 2 and theta 1 3 is known to you, now we have to mark this angle theta 1 2 from A1 C2 and theta 1 3 from A1 C3. So theta 1 2 is 30 degree and theta 1 3 is 60 degree. So I am marking this angle that is theta 1 2 and theta 1 3 from this lines A1 C2 and A1 C3 with respect to that lines. So it is A1 C. 
so this is theta 1 2 this one is theta 1 3 After marking this, I have to draw arc with A1 as center, A1 C2 as radius to cut that angle mark as well as A1 as center, A1 C3 as radius to cut the angle mark. So let's get that arcs with A1 as center, A1 C2 as distance, cut arc. Similarly with A1 as center and A1 C3 as distance. And cut arc. So I cut these two arcs with A1 C2. And A1 C3. As already angles are marked here. From this A1 C2. You can see this one is. This this angle is here 30 degree. So whenever this angle cuts this arc that is your C2 dash and whenever this line now cuts this arc cuts this angle here we get it down. So this one here is C3 dash on this arc. can check now this point is C3 dash even though it is going upward but okay, I like it this is C3 dash. So I got C2 dash and C3 dash. How we get C2 dash? I I repeat, just take angle A1 C2 from just take angle theta 1 2 from this A1 C2, take angle theta 1 3 from this A1 C3. So this angle from A1 C2 is your theta 1 2, and this one is theta 1 3. On these angles, when this arc is cut. It is C2 dash and C3 dash. Now once you get C2 dash and C3 dash, next step is to join C1 with C2 dash and join also C1 with C3 dash. After joining C1, C2 dash, C1, C3 dash, next step is to draw perpendicular bisectors of these two. So I will draw perpendicular bisector taking half distance it is 45. So you can see I mark these points to draw perpendicular bisectors it is half approximately 45 so 22.5 and it is it is 11 so 5.5 okay now through this draw perpendicular bisectors of these two. So. This is for C1, C2 dash and now for C1, C3 dash we get perpendicular bisector here. Now intersection of these two points represents your B point that is B1 point. Join them. So here it is A1, B1 represents your crank and this B1, C1 represents coupler connecting crank and slider. So likewise you can synthesize a 4 bar mechanism by using 3 position synthesis of a 
slider kind of mechanism by using inversion method. I repeat uh, what we did. First, draw these two lines at distance equal to eccentricity e apart. Join a mark a one and c one approximately. Once you get a one c one, then from c one to c two, take distance. Here it is. This distance. So this distance c one c two is equal to s one two. And this distance c one c three is equal to s one three. Get point c two and c three at corresponding distances. Then join a one c two and a one c three. Draw a arc with radius is equal to a one c two, a one as center. Radius is equal to a one c three, a one as center. Draw arcs. Mark angle theta one two and theta one three from a one c two and a one c three. Whenever that arcs cut this angle, it is c two dash and c three dash. Draw perpendicular bisector of c one c two dash and c one c three dash. Its intersection gives us b one. So we get a one b one and b one c one. Likewise, we find out crank link length and coupler link length. So this is your procedure for drawing or for solving a three position synthesis problem of slider crank mechanism by using inversion method.